there were some technical things that were innovative in that they were not the typical uh, web composing mode. So I used a lot of jQuery things that would float windows above a single screen. And the idea was to get beyond links that replace one page with another page and have everything sort of be um, uh, layered in some ways where, you know, materials would just replace themselves in the same screen um, with floating kind of modal windows. Uh, so it took a fair amount of tweaking with some scripts and installing some jQuery libraries and stuff to make that happen. I don't think it was crazy technical, but it did do a nice job of getting rid of the typical complaint of either like a linear text that goes published online in some ways or um, I don't know, the, the just link tracing where you follow stuff and follow stuff and kind of lose track of where you were. So the design had some of that going on. Um, no, I did something a little bit similar in um, a previous Kairos text called I'm a Map, and that one was a different script and a different kind of model of loading. But, um, yeah, so it was the second time I tried something like that. <laughs> uh-huh um i don't know i mean it's a little bit hard to it seems like you almost need to be an outsider to make that kind of comment but i would hope that it um I would hope that it has encouraged some people to try alternative modes a little bit. It's a very um, different genre of scholarship. It has a lot of memoir in there and it has a lot of kind of poetry and performance art to it, even though it still has a lot of scholarship too. So I don't know. I mean, I think people have always been willing to experiment and try different things, but I would hope that others might uh, be encouraged by the fact that you could that it could be published um, and you know people might watch it and uh, even though it's not your typical academic genre in some ways so I would hope it would influence things in that way and then the other big influence I would hope that it would have would be this notion of the screen as a kind of canvas or composing space so it's not just this particular web text but I think that's something I'm really um, I'm starting to see a lot of people doing that, and I had a colleague who mentioned to me yesterday um, hearing about a movie that was just made with someone screencasting Facebook, and um, so they created a full-length feature, but it was all generated through the screen as a camera or as the kind of the composing space. So, you know, I don't think everybody's going to start doing that, but I do feel like there is... Um, some people are doing that and it's happening more often and uh, it opens just some new possibilities for what you could what what you call a camera or what you, what you can do with what's on your on your laptop really Yeah, it goes back a long ways to um, about 2003 when I was working on um, some textbook supplements, actually. And the screen recording then was much more rudimentary. And I may just not have known what I was doing, but the way that it was set up was you had to kind of um, capture everything in one shot. And then there was also a thing where you could add voiceover, but you kind of had to get that all in one shot, too. So it got me into this um, habit of recording something and then it wouldn't quite work out so I'd have to throw it away and record it again and record it again. And, and these were just basic tutorials. I was making these things like how do you insert an image in Microsoft Word and you go to the insert menu and really just kind of what people normally use these screen capture things for. And I had to make a whole bunch of these for this textbook project. So I just spent hours and hours 
performing on the screen to try to get it right and get it recorded. Um, and so I built up that that kind of approach or that habit of doing that. And then, um, then it lay dormant for a while. And then I kind of brought it back when I was interested in doing something about um, the, and this was this earlier Kairos text, I was doing the Mac and the PC commercials. I'm a Mac, I'm a PC commercials. And I really wanted to just rip those um, videos. So the, you know, the easy way was just turn on the screen camera again. And I kind of got back into the idea that um, the ripping these things and recording them could be a compositional move. And then I, um, I made that project and started to just really push on it and experiment with more and more of that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you never know where stuff comes from or originates. It goes back a long way. Another thing that is, um, I don't know, this is a very far back connection, but the idea of um, just really learning to use your, your computer, I did that in kind of a competitive environment when I was working in the computer lab at UT Austin and people would be sort of like, Oh no, you do command X or you do that. You know, people would always be trying to in, in a very helpful collaborative way, like one up each other on here's how you do this. Here's how you do that. So I got into this um, idea about, you know, how can you drive this machine in a very um, kind of efficient or elaborate way what can you do with this piece of technology that that you don't think of normally so. yeah yeah so the um the recordings when you make these screencasts you never really know if you're going to mess up in the middle or if it's going to be the perfect take. So a lot of times what you do is you just record everything in case it turns out to be the great take. You don't want to like be practicing and not have the camera turned on. So I would record a lot of these. And the other thing that happened when I was composing it was the, the text itself organically developed a little bit. So you might think, oh, I'm gonna go in here and open this window and then I'm gonna type this thing. But accidentally you clicked on the wrong window and it brought up an image and then you think, oh, that's kind of interesting. Maybe I could weave that in there. So every time you would do one of these performances, it might generate um, a new path that the text might go down. So I always wanted to kind of be capturing them and then going back and like, iteratively building one on another and then after a while I just realized okay I have all of these materials in here um, and essentially what they are doing is kind of capturing the composing process because it is so iterative and then I got to this notion of the being more of an archival project in some ways or you know curatorial project and then eventually it got ridiculous. So I, I'm sure you, you may have looked at some of it and uh, Madeline Sorper looked at a lot when she was helping me edit the text, but nobody wants to go back and look at like take number eight of, <laughs> of, of piece number seven. There's, you know, there's so much stuff and a lot of it is still on the hard drive that, you know, I decided no, no one needs to see that. And a lot ends up in the trash can or, or what have you as well. Um, so I'm curious about, you know, that idea of capturing your activity and even um, the stuff that's usually ephemeral, what happens when you actually save it and go back and look at it. And
Um, yeah, I think so. I think I've changed the way I approach things. I used to imagine that there would be a lot of kind of impromptu value that would come. So, you know, like extemporaneous typing. I'm going to bring up a window and then I'll just riff on this idea of, um, I don't know, layers and screens or what have you. And a lot of times when you're staging this and like building it up, you you your brain just generates a really interesting phrase and you say, oh, wow, that phrase was great. But then there's a lot of garbage around it. Um, so I, I, I think my composing has shifted a little bit in terms of I don't rely on things to just um, kind of come out of nowhere in these impromptu typing sessions. I still try to do that sometimes, but I think um, the the nuggets that come out are surrounded sometimes by a lot of fluff that isn't really uh, all that valuable. Although sometimes you never know, you get in kind of a flow and, and there's some really interesting things that come up. So now I kind of have a a mixed approach and even in that text there's a mixed approach of you know working on paper and sketching out ideas and then doing a screen recording and maybe you know typing something that just kind of emerges and then um, going back and combining those and creating a script that then you could go back and you know eventually I got to the point where I was faking the impromptu stuff by, you know, typing up a script and recording it and then putting in earbuds and having it play so I could you know, pretend to be typing it live. And then, you know, in my, uh, what I do lately is more or less memorize what I want to type and then I'll sit there and type and, and perform stuff. So I think I've evolved a little bit in terms of, um, just the preparation and staging and the process of how, how I imagine making a text like that in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's two pieces to the performance. There's the kind of um, acting on screen or on stage like you know what we normally think of as a as a kind of theatrical sense of performance but i also have in mind um the uh, performativity that is linked up with theories of materialism and the idea that um uh you know there's objects and events or nouns and verbs and so um uh there's kind of a philosophical underpinning there of what it means to really value um, emergence and performance um, in text themselves. And typically it's almost impossible to see that. So you have a finished text and there was all of this process that happened beforehand, um, but that gets sort of lost. So the idea is the, you know, the capturing in some ways pushes the performative or the process piece a little bit forward and and um, complements then the the product or the you know there's the artifact eventually but that artifact has much more of the kind of activity built into it in some ways and that all is just my um my uh, philosophical kind of fidgeting with notions of space and time and how, you know, you can never just have objects or just have material stuff. It's always going to move forward in time and become process again. And this sort of like Mobius back and forth between um, products and processes and all of that. So that's kind of um, uh, why I really value the, the kind of performative angle. But then the other piece is the, the more uh, theatrical or the idea of um, being in the moment and it's linked up with creativity actually I mean one of the reasons why I enjoy making these is you kind of do get sucked into it and you lose track of time and um, uh, you know you might have tried this 18 times and you it's frustrating and challenging but you keep going and you try it the 19th time and it's getting closer and it, you're just in the moment making is kind of an uh, an active process that you get involved in and um 
And that's not uh, because it's multimedia or what have you. I think the same thing can happen if you're, you know, making uh, poems on paper or making candles or whatever. There's a, a way in which you get um, just caught into the to the creativity of making what you're trying to make. And so that I like that a lot too. 